Well, hello everyone. This is the simulate starting of the simulator series of the instrument flying series. In this, we'll be using the Simeonic G1000 simulator that is available on the Apple Store. It is unfortunately not available for the Android users, but you can use the Simeonic simulator to practice your instrument flying. So in this video, what we'll see is how to execute radial interception that we have learned in the earlier video. So now we'll practice a couple of examples of the radial interception on the simulator. As you can see on your screens right now, this is how the instrument panel looks when you are somewhere away from your station. Now to identify where you are, this is the most important thing in instrument flying. To be to have situational awareness with which you can know that where you are with respect to station and where you want to go. Now, if we start from this position at present to know your present position in the in the 3D fix, what you can see is you are maintaining 3000 feet of altitude. You can see on the bottom left side of your horizontal situation indicator, the DME shows that you are 5 decimal 8 nautical miles out of your designated navigation station which we have tuned in the nav 1 for this uh, case which is uh, Bhavnagar VOR which is Bravo Victor Romeo. Now you can see that from the blue cyan needle, blue cyan needle tails shows us that we are approximately somewhere on the radial 218 right. We are tracking radial 218 out that's why the distance keeps on increasing as we are moving forward. Now we are We'll come back to our desired altitude. We have slightly climbed. So now at 3000 feet, if you can see the green line is our course knob. If you can see, if you will just press the course knob on your uh, PFD, just press it or you bump bumping the course knob, we say it rather. So what it does is it aligns itself with the RMI needle and tells you on which radial you presently are at. So. In this case, what we can see are we are presently on radial 219er. We are tracking to radial 219er out. So what we'll do is we'll make it even. We'll set the course knob to 40. That means the opposite of 40 is 220. We'll try to align the course needle first. And now you can see that we are now tracking radial 220 outbound. Now when we are tracking radial 220 outbound, let's just say that I want to go on radial 240 outbound. I'm presently on 220 outbound. So the first thing for radial interception we need to do is we'll what we'll set is the course knob. The course knob presently we I want to go on radial 240 so outbound. So in outbound when we are setting outbound what we'll do is we'll set the course knob to 240 once we have set the course knob to 240, we know that we are going 220 outbound and 240 lies somewhere to our right. What we will do is we can see we are 11 nautical miles out. So we need to apply based on the distance based method. We need to apply 60 degrees of correction to our desired course. So that will give us a heading to follow of 300. That is 240 plus 60 is 300. Now I will bank right. Remember, when you, whenever you are doing instrument flying, you are supposed to execute rate 1 turns only. So how do you execute rate 1 turns? You can see the magenta line just adjacent to the heading indicator. When that magenta line touches the second white line as it is touching right now, this shows you that you are doing a rate 1 turn. Now what we'll do is we'll roll out on heading 300. Once we roll out on heading 300, the next task we need to do is we need to wait for the CDI needle to become alive. So what does the CDI needle to become alive means is the course deviation needle shows you a maximum deflection of 10 degrees. So presently my desired radial that which I want to go to is 240. So radial 240 I want to go to and I am presently crossing radial let's just say 2. 30. Now as I cross 230, I'm about to reach 240. You can see that the course deviation needle becomes alive. That means it starts to align with the course, the desired course that we have set. Right? 
slightly deviated from my heading. So now what we are supposed to do with respect to the rate at which the course deviation needle is changing uh, is uh, actually chasing the course needle, the deviation needle, we are supposed to roll out on our desired course which is 240 in such a way that the deviation needle exactly aligns with our desired course. So what we'll do is once that line touches the aircraft, we'll start to execute a rate one turn. Now you must know this as you start to turn the rate at which the course deviation needle was going towards the desired course will reduce. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to reduce our bank so that the rate of turn reduces and the rate at which we are moving to our desired heading also reduces. Now we have chased, we can see we have perfect, we are perfectly aligned with our course knob 240, the deviation is perfectly aligned. We'll roll out on heading 240 and we'll set the heading back to 240. Okay. So now we have intercepted radial 240 outbound. So this is the same case that you need to apply when you're going inbound to inbound. In case of inbound to inbound, what we, you will do is you will add or subtract based on if you're turning left, you will subtract based on your, if you're turning right, you will add. Now, but the case goes opposite when you're trying to do either inbound to outbound or outbound to inbound. Let's just take a case that now presently we are going on radial 240 outbound. And let's just say that I want to go on radial 265 inbound. If I want to go on radial 265 inbound, my desired course will be, I will have to look at or I'll have to subtract 180 from 265, which will give me 85 degrees, right? So what I'll do is my desired course, I will set it to 085. My desired course is 085. Now I know that radial 2 six five actually lies to my right that means i have to reduce because i'm going outbound to inbound so i have to reduce 60 degrees from 85 which gives me a desired heading of two five so i'll set my heading back to two five i've set the heading back to two five now i know that the radial lies to my right so i will start to turn towards my right I slightly climbed while I was trying to explain you. So, actually I can give this uh, explanation for not maintaining my altitude, but I beg your pardon. You are always supposed to maintain your desired altitude. I'll initiate a rate one turn towards my right to heading 025. I'm slightly exceeding my rate one turn, will reduce my banking angle. So again, in the next simulator session, I'll explain you how do you would you know that how much you need to bank to get a rate one turn. There is a specific formula for that, but I'll save that for the simulator session for the course reversals. That is the next chapter that we do after radial interception. So we we'll now we are exactly rolled out on heading zero to five. You guys must be wondering that what does that magenta diamond represent that lies just adjacent to our desired heading that magenta diamond is actually what you call as your wind corrections from the the to the left of your horizontal situation indicator and heading indicator the below the desired heading where you can see your desired heading you can see there is a wind indicator which shows that we are having a cro right crosswind component of seven knots and a headwind component of two knots so what diamond actually represents is the heading correction that you need to apply to maintain your desired track. Because we know that as the winds come from the right, our aircraft nose need to go into the right as well to be able to maintain the same track that we need to go. So that's why the diamond lies slightly left or of our desired heading. So if I perfectly align that magenta diamond with the heading desired heading that I've set, so my present heading is 0 to 8. But my magenta diamond, my magenta diamond lies on 0 to 5. When my magenta diamond lies on 0 to 5, that will explain. What will it explain? That I am now actually following heading. As we have chosen a radial, which is uh, the difference is uh, 
somewhat more than our last and and you also see that we are a little further from the station because of which the distance between the radials increases we have seen it in the theory that as we move out move out of the station the distance between the radial will increase that is why it is taking slightly more time to intercept this radial so what we need to see is that our desired radial is our desired radial is 265 and we are presently crossing radial 255 now the course deviation needle will start to become alive as you can see it has become alive now but the rate at which it is moving towards our desired course is slightly less now as that needle starts to approach our desired course we'll start to bank remember we have to roll out on our desired heading in desired course in such a way that the deviation needle perfectly aligns Here, the important thing is not our rate one turn. What is more important is that we actually align the deviation needle to our desired course. So our desired course 085 will perfectly roll out. As you can see now, the deviation needle has aligned with the course knob. Now we have actually executed the outbound to inbound. And similarly, you can actually execute inbound to outbound as well and inbound to inbound this was just to show you how you're supposed to execute and i won't stretch this video further longer than it is required so for the radial interception part this will be all for today i have not discussed the cockpit setup because it is something which you learn while uh, which is something you will learn while you are flying and it becomes more relevant and important the way it is done in any flying academy that you are going to while the procedures to execute a radial interception course reversal and other things remain nearly the same okay so this will be all for this video i hope you could uh, see and you could judge something and you could learn something that how you are supposed to execute a radial interception i hope this video helps you and this is anime sanyal signing off bye bye